Hey everybody, it's Mr. N, and we are doing another related rates problem. These involve the shadow problems. These are the famous shadow problems. And you'll notice that I've set up two different types, and basically you have to just pay attention to what they're asking for. In this first one, it says a street light is mounted on top of a 12-foot pole, and a man 5 feet 6 inches tall, so let's start listing our givens. You could finish reading it, is walking away from the pole at a rate of 2 feet per second. Okay, so let's go ahead and start listing what we are given here. Okay, so we've got this uh, street light mounted on top of a pole, and it casts a shadow down, and there's a guy here that's six feet tall, and so then he sees a shadow on the ground, and he is, uh, or I'm sorry, he's five feet six inches tall, so that would be 5.5 feet six inches, so this is 5.5 feet. This is all the things we're given, and that's 12. All right, so let's take a look. He is walking away at a rate, this is a rate of two feet per second. Okay, well, we've got a couple things going on here. And on these shadow questions, I suggest you break it apart into what is going on. You've got an X and a Y. This is, we'll call X, and this will call Y. It doesn't matter which one you call X. It doesn't matter which one you call Y. Basically, X is this distance, and he's going to be walking away from the pole at that distance. So that means this is our DX, DT. This guy is walking away from the pole at a rate of 2 feet per second. This is the shadow, and that's a DY, DT. The shadow changes at a rate of Y, DY, DT. So I called X the pace that the guy is walking and DY or Y the rate at which the shadow is going to be changing. So it's important to break, break that up because it's going to be two different things, but they will still be in proportion. Just like how we did cones, we had proportions. Same thing here. So the proportion I have here is 12 to 5.5, and then I've got X plus Y. So let's write that in. I've got X plus Y to the uh, to the whole thing. I'm sorry, 12 to, five, 12 to x plus y, 5.5 to y. So let's write that in. So we've got this. I'll show you these triangles here. This is y, and this is 5.5. This is x, and that's 12. So we've got 12 to x plus y. That's my first right triangle. And then we've got 5.5 to the y. All right. So at this point, let's go ahead and clean this up. Let's go ahead and solve for y. So I will get, uh, let's go ahead and do it this way, 12y equals 5.5x plus 5.5y. And bring the 5.5 over, so I'll get 6.5y equals 5.5x. At this point, I want to clean this up. I will get y equals, it'll be 11 thirteenths x when you divide that out. All right. So we've set up our, our equation. Our equation was all just based on a ratio. That's it. The shadow is going to move at a different ratio than he is. So let's find out what that shadow ends up doing, because that's what it's asking. What, at what rate is the tip of the shadow moving away from the person when the person is 25 feet from the pole? So I set it all up. I got to this part. Now I want to find out the tip of the shadow. This is the dy dt. That's what it's asking for. So go ahead and differentiate this. We'll get dy dt equals 11 thirteenths dx dt. We know what dx dt is. They gave us that it's 2. So dy dt equals 11 thirteenths times our 2 feet per second, which gives me a value of 22 thirteenths feet per second, and this is approximately 1.6923 feet per second. Let's keep it as a decimal. All right, so now let's look at what the second question is asking. The second question is asking is, at what rate is the tip of the shadow? Again, so we're looking at the tip of the shadow here, right there, moving away from the pole. Oh, so I'm moving away from the pole. This time, over here, the tip of the shadow was moving away from the person. You see the difference? The tip of the shadow 
moving away from the person, so I'm looking for that. This time, the tip of the shadow moving, so there's the tip of the shadow moving away from the pole, which is right there, so I need that whole thing. So the difference here is that the shadow moving, we, we know what dx dt, they're not going to ask you what, what dx dt is unless they give you the other information. This was 2. The two things that they can ask you is what is the dy dt, which is the shadow moving away from the person, or they can ask you the shadow moving away from the whole thing, which is the pole. And that's what they're doing in the second one. So over here, this time, if this is my x and this is my y, let's just call this z. We'll call all the way across z. We knew that this was 12. But in fact, we don't even need any of those other values right now because we can find what, uh, let's, before I differentiate, let me explain to you what's happening. We can find that z is x plus y, and now we can implicitly differentiate and say dz dt. So that's the rate at which this whole thing is changing right there, is going to be dx dt plus dy dt. So I differentiated each of these. All right, well, I know what dx dt is. It was in the problem. It was 2. That's this part right here. I know what dy dt is. I solved it in part A. That's that right there. So if you didn't do that already, or if they just asked this, well, yeah, you'd have to go back and solve what the dy dt is before you do that. And again, that's how you would do it up there. So in this case, we're going to have 20. And the 25 has, doesn't even come into account because it's all based on the ratios. So dx dt, we said, was 2 feet per second, and we solved for the dy dt, which is 1.6923 feet per second, and we'll get a total of 3.6923 feet per second for this problem. Again, what are the keys when you're doing these shadow problems? Well, first determine what they're asking as far as the movement. This one is moving away from the person, so it's this value. This one, the tip of the shadow is moving away from the pole, so that's the whole thing across. We know what the dx is, dx dt, that was 2, it was given in the problem. So use that information. Again, if they ask you for part b without even asking you part a first, you would have to do part a anyway to solve that. So hopefully that helps. And uh, good luck with your related rates problems.